Hello, uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining this uh, meetup, uh, which is uh, Singapore AI uh, Technology Meetup Group uh, and Hong Kong AI Technology Meetup Group. So every month uh, we are bringing a lot of uh, interesting startups and AI use cases in meetups in our uh, AI Meetup Group. Uh, so in this uh, this month uh, we are bringing in Nota AI. So we had Nota AI a few months ago also uh, with interesting areas representing uh, in our Meetup Group. So this month uh, we are bringing back Nota AI from all the way from Korea. Uh, so they are going to talk about uh, AI use case on driver monitoring and intelligent uh, transportation system. Uh, so they are going to introduce uh, Nota ITS and Nota DMS platform. Uh, so the speaker for today is uh, Mr. Eric Hong. Eric Hong. He's a research engineer at Nota AI. Uh, so he'll be uh, going through these areas uh, more in depth and uh, we'll be having a uh, few uh, Q&A sessions during the uh, meetup event as well. Uh, so uh, keep engaged uh, to this uh, meetup session and uh, we'll be uh, having a couple of uh, Q&A during this meetup as well. Uh, so it will be really interesting uh, one and a half hour uh, that we are planning uh, for this meetup. Uh, so uh, do like to get your inputs uh, and Q&A uh, coming in. Uh, you can uh, unmute yourself and ask a question or you can ask a question in the chat as well uh, and uh, we'll uh, hand it over to uh, Mr. Wong uh, to start. Okay, thank you Mr. Udiha. Um, let me share the screen. Um, please give me, give me uh, permission to share the screen, please. Of course, uh, now you can share the screen. Okay, um, hello everybody, and thank you for joining this meetup. Um, I'm Eric Kong, a research engineer in Nota AI, which is a AI company uh, based on South Korea. So, so okay. let me share the screen. So this is our this is our schedule, rough schedule actually. This is today. I'm gonna. I'm going to introduce our, our solution, industrial solution. First one is DM driver monitoring system. And second one is intelligent transportation system. And I'm going to introduce um, our core technology, Nespresso, uh, which will be introduced in part two meetup, and which will be held on 28 September 2022. And we are going to, we're going to notify you guys um, the exact date and time later because Actually, this is provisional and this is not fixed yet, but we are, um, we are, if we expect that this date will um, be fine for us. So let me begin. So Nespresso Solutions and Jar Monitoring System and Intelligent Transportation System. And I note that some guys are joining during the session and that's fine. And please give me a chat if you have any questions during the meetup. So, okay. Yeah, this is our, this is our content. First, I'm gonna introduce the on device, what is on device AI and its applications. And we are, I'm going to introduce the two, these two types of industrial solutions. And, um, this is a very first slide I prepared. Um, what is machine guided? This, this, what is AI and what is this? What is like AI and machine learning? I think that the machine learning is actually that's what the essential essence of machine learning is machine guided decision making system. It makes sense, right? They make decent boundaries for classification and object detection and segmentation and so on. And every every task is like that are so-called some kind of distant making. They, they are used for this, some kind of distant making. So I, I, say, I think that I think that machine learning is actually um, a system which makes distance for human beings, right? And when it comes to the small devices, like we say, we say it on device AI or small, very small devices, which is applied on the very harsh environment, environment for machines. What is harsh environment for machines? It's like under the water, on the sea, over the air, and even in the car. 
these, these kind of environments are very harsh for machines to survive because in this kind of environment, they, we cannot support, we cannot provide electricity by the, by the cable. And we only use to, we have to, we have to use the battery power and we have to, we, we cannot use the LAN cable for data transfer. There can be no Wi-Fi here, right? So we call it on-device AI and these kind of environment, we still need some kind of decision making, like for, for example, like this, there's a turbine like this and the drone is flying on the air and the driver uh, and the, the, the drone, the drone detects the cracks uh, on the propeller, right? So this kind of distance making is done by the small devices, which is not connected to the power cable and which is not also, which is either connected to the LAN cable and all the processes, all the data transfer and all the data processing and all the inference, all the, all, all things, all the things are, all the things should be done just in small devices. So we call it on-device AI and this environment is very limited for machines. So, okay. so we say um, deep neural network is actually, basically it's done on the server side with a lot of GPU power, right? So we, on that deep neural network was like developed in past 10 to 20 years, they was developed just regarding, they don't have resource limitation, but in the reality, in reality, we have a resource limitation. So we provide lightweight deep neural network. So um, in deep, um, if the machine learning work, if the deep learning model sizes get larger, larger and larger, and the inference time um, cracks in some in the small device, but we provide small AI models for small devices. We call it we call it informer. We call it hardware aware AI model optimization. But in the informer term, we say we provide small AI models for small devices. So they comes to edge devices. What is edge device? Without, without, even without the AI, uh, edge device is it, it means the edge node of this network, right? This is core core node of net, network, and uh, for example, like cloud server and on premise. But edge device means the edge. It literally means the edge of the network. So the in edge device, for example, in a car. Um, what what important thing is low perception response time? For example, when you drive a car, we need some um, when and the car detects some and if the car predicts some accident or some like some event, if all the AI inference power is um, provided by the cloud or on-premise servers, you know the network latency matters, right? So in this case, even, even in this case, we need on-device AI, which don't need network. Um, all the inference, all the, all the prediction inference and every data processing should be done without the network. So we, we need an on-device AI. So this is a trend actually. Uh, we develop AI model in the server side in the cloud. And we would like, we, pursue our dream is to make AI model more pervasive, more democratic, right? So we want to bring intelligence to the edge to make the server side, the, to, to make the server side dumb and fast. I think some guys are, yeah. So we say another, in another term is on device intelligence. And on device intelligence, um, by definition, it is very strong for privacy and uh, good, good for reliability and low latency and efficient use of network bandwidth. Or if, um, in, in, in particular, for the privacy issue, uh, it's very safe for the edges to secure the user's data set because they don't assume to be connected to the web at the very first place. So there will be no data leak, right? 
right, in non-device intelligence. So no land cable for data transfer and no power with the cable, power cable, only battery powered machines. So this is our production cycle and we are positioned here. Step one, collect data set. Every AA model need a data set, right? So step one, zero, collect data set. Step one, uh, train a large model. And step two, make AI models, make large AI models smaller to fit into the small device. And you know, even in this in the large network, we usually use um, Ubuntu or Microsoft OS uh, and Mac OS. So we have very few number of stacks for server side, but when it comes to the edge devices, the hardware spec and software runtime spec specs are very specific and very limited. So it's very hard for users to make every small AI models fit into each different set of specs for each device, like Raspberry Pi or NVIDIA series or Justin series or OpenVNO series, something like that. So they need someone, AI, or AI model engineers need someone to provide small AI models for them because they are not, they are not like, they're, they're not well formatted. They are not like unified and comparing to this, this side. So compress large models to small ones and mount small models on small device and inference throughout the camera and apply to each domain. So I'm in this meetup, I'm going to introduce two types of um, two types of two type of cases. First one is autonomous vehicle, and second one is on the small city. First one is about the car, and the second one is about, about the road on the city. So this is our part one meetup about DMS, driving wheelchair system and intelligent transportation system. And I'm going to introduce um, the Nespresso, our core technology, which enables the drive DMS and ITS. And later, if, uh, actually one, one or two months later, I'm going to introduce this part later. And this meetup is about the DMS and ITS. So far, let me check. Let me check if they have any comments or questions. No, yeah. Let me proceed. So first thing first uh, is about driving with driver monitoring system. So how can you prevent the traffic accident? Yeah, if people die and they lose their property if they have an accident. And the main um, main reason they have a, they have a car accidents is about is with but drowsiness and distraction during driving and losing attention for any reason. Drowsiness, distraction, and using cell phone and smoking in the car. This, time, this kind of actions um, causes mainly cause serious car accidents. So we need some kind of small distance making system which detects the user's, user's status and give them alert. It detects driver space. It watches over. Actually, the drive the the camera in the car, which is attached on the black box position here, watches over driver space, and they need to detect and they need to make a decision if the driver is actually sleeping or distracted, and if they use cell phone or not, and give them alert as soon as possible. Without without the data transfer through the network. Every process should be done this on device. So we call on device system. On device AI system. <laughs> the driver is slipping here like this. We detect the head pose. And I need status and gate status. provide the DMS SDK with various camera types. This is the RGB camera, this IR camera, and this can be uh, 
catch it in various positions in the car. And even in the shadows of sunlight in many di different directions, it's fine. And this is enabled by the Nespresso or Code Technology and supp support many different types of hardware specs. So in brief, it's actually it's in brief, it's in cabin data to signal processing uh, solution, right? The car driver saw drivers is sleeping during driving and the intelligent intelligent camera detects the data set, collect data set and process it. And in a very short term, they, pr they provide a signal, they provide alert. So it's a data to signal processing solution. So this is DMS demo. This is me. And we have, we provide actually in this demo, we provide four, four different models, like this. This is our solution. This is our demo of driving return solution. Because we couldn't make, we couldn't bring a real car into the exhibition center. So we like this. This is driving monitoring system. It's an IR camera and RGB camera. We need both cameras to detect. Even in the nighttime or daytime, they put on. Um, it works very well and steady. And you see, it's just a nano. Um, it's just a nano. It's a 23 milliseconds in front. It's in front time. And if I so, yeah. In the nighttime or in the daytime, it detects our, our, my faces and detects the bounding box and landmark of each eye, left eye and right eye. And it influences the head pose and eye aspect ratio. If you have mouth aspect ratio, it means if I open my mouth with while I'm yarn, yarning in the car, it um, detects my mouse open and give me a signal. So you see that they have one, two, x-axis of head pose, y-axis of head pose, bounding box, landmark, and drowsiness, and mouse open, mouse aspect ratio. So we provide five different, five different features in a single device, which is just nano which cost uh, about one and fifty dollars. Uh, you can buy it uh, in, in Amazon.com. It's a very cheap price. This is demo driving return system. Okay. So yeah, in summary, we have basic model. It, there are four basic models, bounding box, landmark, and left eye and right, right eye. And we combine these four, the result of these four models. Actually, this is not about ensemble learning. They work, um, they, the, the four different models run simultaneously and totally independently running in the small, um, small device, one just single device. Um, so this is our camera, RGB camera, and head pose, eye drowsiness, and mouth open ratio. And also we provide, we can provide optional features like face mask with a fa uh, face with a mask for smoking cell phone. And um, we can provide also a face based, face recognition based authentication uh, function like this. So there are key features in the Todd DMS offers. Uh, we actually, we make, we can make building block. These are different types of building blocks. And if our customer wants this and this and this, we combine these three features and provide their own customized solution. It contains drowsiness, distraction, unregistered or unregistered, and cell phone and smoking, so on. Only one box like that. For lunch. For lunch or what? No, what time? Okay, no. Um, 
Tony, uh, please do. If you have questions, please use. This, you can see from there. Please use the chat. You meeting now? You meeting for lunch? So lunch time we meet now. Yeah. Um, they have questions. What is the difference in reliability of the edge device compared to the powerful computer? See the one rise here. They are used currently in cars like Tesla. See the rise here. Tony, you can uh, mute your mic. Uh, can you hear us? Yeah, please turn on the mic, please, Tony. Thank you. Yeah, so please. Mm -hmm. Powerful computer that are used currently in cars in Tesla. You know, um, okay, um, let me let me summarize like this. In Tesla, yeah, I know that, I know that they have a very strong machine. They, they have very strong computing power in the car. Yeah, that's fine, that's good, but you know, we, our, our provision, our dream is to make AI model democratic. You know what it means? Yeah, yeah you know what it means? So the reliability of the edge, it means we are, yeah, we, we would like to provide very cheap device with a very cheap software to, for our user to, to use for their, for their taste, right? The Tesla I make, how can I say it? They make everything, right? They make OS, they make chips, they make cars, and they make everything in one pack of on one pack, but not every car factories can make like Tesla's, right? They if they need some small devices, they just need that part. We we don't we don't make cars, but we we help we can help our customers to use a single function. So that's our, our main difference between the, our, our solution and Tesla. We only provide the DMS solutions, but Tesla make everything by himself. So we don't actually, actually this is the, the second different part. They provide powerful computer, which may cost high, right? The powerful computer means they need a lot of mo more money but we provide less powerful computer. Yeah, that's the difference. Um, because for the for this very small function like DMS or some other functions on which is to be done in on the edge device, we don't need a powerful computer. But the powerful computer means they need for general purpose, right? The operating system, the, the strong operating system can support like Microsoft Word and something, something, something at the same time. That's why that's why why we need powerful computer. But if you want if we want to provide just a single or one solution or second two solutions in in a computer, then we don't need powerful computer, which costs more than the edge devices. So I think it's not about reliability issue, but it's about the cost. Not everybody can afford afford a, a afford a money for the um, expensive machines. So yeah, are there any other fields? This driving monitoring system can be generalized to. Well, um, the actually the driver monitoring system is based on the face recognition system, right? So. What is what in which can we use the face recognition system? It's like face authentication system in the door. If, for example, if you are living in the house and you need a security devices on the door, right? And for example, we can provide a face recognition system for the for the security for your house. Right? This is it will be another be another example. And Yeah. Maybe can yeah. Can you can you skip this question? Can you feel the driving system can be generalized to hmm. Yeah, that's what what I um think about. Let me think about how can there if any other fields this driving monitoring system can be generalized to. Well, the second generalization will be 
um, detecting multiple multiple people you know, or multiple multiple objects in the car, right? That can be another another direction of the generalization. But in our solution, we only provide just one single driver and just a driver in just just limited to the face of the driver. And if possible, we'd like to generalize that feature to to every the whole view of the car to detect to can, which, which may include the family members of the drivers or child status of the drivers like that. So in this software optimizes prediction based on different individuals, for example, face recognition then rolls a model with different parameters that are unique to different individuals. Um, I told you that the driver monitoring system is actually based on the face recognition and face authentication system. And we can distinguish um, different drivers. Like uh, we need to actually, there is just one driver in a car and it's a common sense, but if the driver changes, the, the second driver um, can, can register their, his face, his or her face to our, our device. Then we can support two or three or even more. Actually the limit, the capacity of the number of faces we can separate, we can distinguish is 5,000. Um, because we start, after, actually the driving motion system was start, was begin, um, begin from this project was begin from, begun from the face recognition system uh, for the houses. So houses or factories. So we, so we can actually, we can support the capacity of faces is actually 5,000 uh, in max. Based on different individuals. Yeah. But basically we need just one driver in a car. Can we connect the Azure AWS services? Yes, you can. Yeah, yes, you can. But what's the need for? Yeah, what's the need? What's the need for driver monitoring system to be connected to Azure or services on the cloud? Maybe that kind of the different scenarios can be possible, but not the driving. In the driving, you need to just on device on just edge device. What what edge device can do is just watch over watch over the driver status and give alert when there is signal. And if the driving, if the car stopped, then, then, then the device connected to the web and send the data for, send the collected record, recorded data to the web. But there can, in desktop, there can be some security issues because his or her face, which is person, personal, personal information, um, is on the on the web, right? And then there can be a security issue. But currently, we don't use any, we don't use any data transfer uh, via the web LAN cable. So it's very secure for the for the driver. Yeah. So what makes the tiny JMS special? These four features: high performance and low cost device. Yeah, that's the point. Low cost edge devices. If you if you know the computing machine, the objective of computing is not about high performance only. High performance means high cost, right? We want if you want we will want to make very strong deep learning neural, deep neural network. We need a lot of money to train with a lot of with many number of GPUs, but we provide high not highest, but high enough performance on low cost devices. The performance, so performance is not about our issue actually. Less performance than the powerful server, that's enough for small devices for specific, specific objective. So face recognition, face detection, landmark detection, post estimation, and so on. With the Nespresso, uh, which will be introduced in the next second meetup, enables actually the what the function of Nespresso is generating small AI model, aware 
um, the, sm the small devices that specs. So we, if even we have these four types of different different edge devices, which has different runtime engine or different OS or or like you know they're all different. But Dispresso make small AI model considering each different specs of edge devices. So DMS is, is enabled by the Nespresso, which is in is actually Nespresso is uh, was our in-house tool for our engineer, our new, our AI engineers to work more convenient. But yeah, so enabled on Nespresso. The complex engineering system running on tiny edge devices was enabled by Nespresso. So this is the performance table. Um, I think you are not familiar with the umbrella CB 25, 25, but you can, I think you may be familiar with just Nano, which is come from NVIDIA and Raspberry Pi. So we compare these two main feature, our main feature of DMS, face, face landmark and eye landmark. Face landmark is for distraction, detecting distraction, and eye landmark is to detect, to detect the drawings. You see that milliseconds are, it increases when it comes to Raspberry Pi, which is less power, less power than it's much cheaper than the just Nano. So yeah, this is our main feature and performance table and optional feature, smoke, cell alert, car alert and mask alert. You see the overall inference time and FPS. So 15, F, um, 15, FPS for main main function and 11 FPS frame per second uh, for the option, optional optional feature. Actually, over over five FPS FPS would be enough for the this kind of tasks, but we get double or triple of the minimum boundary. So power consumption is 20 watt and 15 watts. This is very low. And power consumption, you know, in the drive, in the driver, in cabin, in in, in the car, in the car, um, we need a better uh, with the driver monitoring system or in any kind of electricity, electric devices in the car, um, the power supply is based on the batteries, so we need we need to make it less or less. So it's available for various camera types, RGB camera on the daytime, and IR camera for the you know, infrared um, camera for the day nighttime. So even when you can use IR and RGB hybrid. It supports various positions. For some face recognition system, it detects, it detects it's um, some in other, other companies, other devices are not stable or rigid for the different positions of the detecting the faces, but our solution is really very rigid and, um, and stable for the different, different positions. And for the rear mirror and cluster here, and facial center, uh, center fascia, and wherever in the car, that's fine. And it's robust in different environment with the glasses and caps and cell phones and cigarettes, sunlight angle, different angle and shadow, all works fine. And I'm going to introduce the ITS solution, which is outdoor solution. This is actually um, in the car, there's no rain, right? There's no snow in the car, but in ITS solution, which I'm going to introduce soon, works very well, was just fine with the rain or snowy or foggy, yeah, that's fine for our solution. It's very rigid and, and robust. So our solution, actually this camera is not our product. Our product is AI model. So our product is compressed or small, very small AI model. And we provide our AI model to black box company, like dash cam companies like here. So this is low spec hardware, it's umbrella CB25 was installed in this dash cam with the, these two features. And in another case, we provide five features. It's, it's like building blocks. 
So if our customer, our clients request us, we need this, 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 this feature, then we combine these features and make AI model works with these features and provide AI model for our client. So this is the market view of the driving monitoring system, which is on the car companies. You know, we, um, we distinguish before market and after market. The before market is about uh, tier one companies like BMW, Volkswagen, Bosch, and Continental, this is, which is a big, big companies which have their own factories. So the tier two is the aftermarket companies like Dashcam and the flight vehicles and insurance companies like this. And they combine different modules of hardware, camera and, and device and cable and so on. They make a small device and they sell it after. And the before and after means, before market means the car, in, the standard is the car. If the car is, car is made in the factory and the dash cam can be attached after the car is produced, right? So we call it after, after factory market. And this is before factory market. We distinguish like this, tier one and tier two. And we, our product, our end product is not camera or hardware device. We are not hardware company, we are software company. So we provide AI model, small AI model, which awares, which is trained Awareing the small with the with the each hardware aspect, we provide a small AI model as an OEM or some other format to the tier two company. And the tier two and the device will be attached to the car. And you know, when the car is on the road, there is in, in Europe, we actually we have a we have a branch in Berlin in San Jose in US. And they have um, strong regulations that you see the, this is, this is called NCAP regulation. Um, the NCAP regulation will be is expected to established in 2023, the next the next year. Um, the regulation uh, strictly strictly um, strictly regulate the car companies that every autonomous vehicle or every advanced vehicle should install, should install at least one device which watches over the driver's status. You know, when we drive or drive, when we drive autonomous vehicle, in autonomous vehicle, the driver don't drive while driving, right? That's the definition of, of autonomous vehicle. The driver don't drive while driving. So it means the drivers is much e get much easier to lose attention while driving in autonomous vehicle. If it's not an autonomous vehicle, the drivers have to have to sustain his attention while driving because it's dangerous. But in autonomous vehicle, the driver driver can be easily relieved because they don't drive, and it may cause severe severe cause for the car accident. So. This is a all decided. They will be the drug, the end cap regulation will be established in next year. So this is we this is we see that um, these tier two mark tier one market companies actually you know that um, the life cycle of the product is very long here. You know, when we when they want to make a car, a new car, they need um, three to five years in advance before they they run the factory. Actually, then what's the point here? What's the problem then? You know, the advance of neural network is very fast. Now, currently, we have Yolo V5 model and. What was it in three or five years before? Were you the one? I, I don't think. Yeah. Five years ago, it was 2000, 2017. They didn't have YOLO even. So they're very slow. 
by definition, they are very slow. And even Yula 1 and Yula V2 is very advanced technology for them. But in our side, in software side, it's, it changes very fast. So they have a strong gap between the hardware companies and software companies. And we see that we can help them to adapt this very fast change, change of, of the functions of the car. Yeah, that's what we see for the market. In Europe, they say they have Euro NCAP regulation. And in the US, they have NHTSA regulation. So we pursue a human safety through in cabin vision solution. It's a driving monitoring system which detects a single driver in car. Maybe in, we can generalize it um, to detect all the family members or in the child to secure their safety in the car. This is the end of the introduction of driving monitoring system. And I'm going to introduce the yeah, intelligent, transportation, intelligent transportation system. After, do we, do you have a question? Do wearing spectacles affect the accuracy of DMS significantly? Well, um, actually, current, currently, I don't have a number yet, but the research team here have the number. Um, the accuracy of the, the accuracy of the spectacles on the uh, wearing of uh, wearing spectacles on the face affects the affects the affect may affect the kind of how can I say may affect the inference speed of the of the solution, but not accuracy. There there was no significant significant difference between wearing it or not wearing it. But the more but we apply the more features, face, smoke, like turning half like this. At the same time, it tends to, our solution tends to get slower, a little bit slower, like 100 milliseconds to get 120 milliseconds. If we add one feature, one more feature, 130 milliseconds like that. It affects more of the speed rather than the accuracy in our case. So not an ITS. Comparing to the DMS, which is, was an in-cabin solution, uh, the ITS here is an outdoor solution. The car is a modern device. An intelligent system, it is a, came from the Wikipedia here. It's a definition of an ITS, intelligent transportation system. Uh, it's an advanced, advanced application. It aims to provide innovative services relating to different modes of transport and traffic management and enables users to be better informed, better informed and make safer on the road. So there is a concept of local dynamic map. When you turn on the Google map on your smartphones like this, there will be four layers. Layer one contains information of permanent static information like, like the road itself. And the layer two, layer three, layer four. As, it, as, the num as the number here get higher, um, it's more, it, getting, it gets more highly dynamic. So the layer four contains information of the position of the cars, right? like here, position of the cars and trajectories of the car, or pedestrian's position or trajectories of the car and pedestrians. So in I ITS, I'm going to call it ITS. Uh, ITS, we support layer, we use the data set came from the layer three and layer four. In the layer three, we have the same dynamic road and weather and traffic conditions. Traffic conditions, the light signal phases on the road. In brief, it's a conceptual diagram which depicts um, the ITS solution. The car and pedestrian here gives them a data. The traffic camera installed on the on the on the road detect collects the data and give signal. It's also you remember you may remember the DMS solution is data to data to signal processing solution, and it's the same. ITS is a data to data to signal processing solution. The data set came from the road and traffic camera detects it and give 
alert or signal when um, they they predict some event, like a car crash or accident on the crosswalk. Okay. So this is under conceptual diagram. The edge device collects data set here. This is a camera and we send it to the our edge device like this. And CCTV for security. And this is a big board and right turn. The car is turning right here, turning right. And the pedestrians working through the crosswalk here. And the big board will give them an alert if they predict the three second, the position of the car and position of the pedestrian after after the three seconds, if it predicts after the three seconds, it if they if our system detects the car crash and accident and gives alert to the driver and the pedestrian. So this is our use case. We work with NVIDIA, we work with ARM and NVIDIA or Renaissance with many companies. And this is one, this is one um, case. Uh, collaboration with the NVIDIA and Nota AI. Yeah, we use Jason, Jason series. Actually, we use Jason Javier here. And there is a camera. I, I don't see the camera here. There's a camera and it, it detects the number of cars on the road, how crowded it is, and gives signal and collect and data set. It's own device IT solution and real-time traffic signal control and feature, the third one is intelligent video analytic application. So ITS, our ITS, actually intelligent transportation system in general term covers a lot, huge number of sub features, which, um, um, which is in the smart city itself. But in our solution, our not AI's ITS solution, we only support three main features. First thing is AI traffic camera, which it collects their real-time data set. And our traffic signal, con we, does, we have two so sub-solutions. The so first one is smart traffic signal control. Second one is AI stack crossing, which these two were enabled by the AP AI traffic camera here. So yeah, so our end product will be this one or this one or this one to, for some client they, don't, they may don't need this inference engine. Maybe our gov some government may want, may want, they only need a data set, a real-time data set with a bounding box of the cars. Then we provide our data set to the government. So this, this IT solution is mainly collaborated with the government. So it's a B2G business, business to business to government business. So, First, we, it's an AI traffic camera. Okay, let's see. There's a problem. Got to fix it. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to show you the video clip of the AI traffic signal control. So AI traffic signal control detects the cars on the road. If the car, the number of cars are very crowded on the road, the traffic camera detects the traffic status and give signal time. So usually the traffic signal runs in in very static manner, like 10 seconds or 15 seconds, they change the green light to the red light. But our traffic cameras, our AI traffic camera control system will provide dynamic traffic camera, the, the duration of the signal, like green light here or red light here, um, runs dynamically changes. <laughs> Yeah, 
so it will help for the government to relieve relieve the relieve the cloudiness of the road. And the second solution. Uh. Do you have any question? So let me show you the second video clip. <coughs> it's about the AI traffic. No, no, no. Traffic camera, AI traffic <coughs> signal control. Papa, we can be together. Be together. I think it's the same video. Yeah. I see that. Can you uh, mute your mic? To any service crossing here. Thanks. Pedestrian would like to cross the road through the crosswalk, and if the car is turning right, the camera detects the position of the car, position and pedestrian, position of cars and pedestrian. It gives them alert. Hey, don't, don't go there like this. This is an alarming system for the safety of the car and the pedestrians. So we have these two use cases, which was done with the government side, AI yeah, traffic signal control and safe crossing. So solving the traffic is to solve the traffic congestion in chronological congested areas. And second solution um, is to, um, is to save. Uh, wants to help help the wants to provide alert for the pedestrian to improve the safety of the pedestrians crossing the intersections. So this is this is a short, very short, um, very part of our data table. So we use the Justin Javier, and the, this is a data type of the data set. You know, this is you see that this is quantized. This is not quantized. And this is a number of channels number of number of data channels four, if we have four channels it means we have four cameras if it's a 16 means we have 16 cameras on the which watches over the the same spot you see the fps here and fps pruning fps pruned with the pruning ratio of 0 0.72 0 0.72 so you see that um, as the number of channels increase, I mean, it means that the number of number of number of data set increase. You see, the FPS is getting slower, 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 and slower. The seven FPS, which was twenty eight FPS, right? It's natural, right? It's natural. And the and the effect of pruning. The neural network of pruning ratio 0 0.72 um, was very high here, almost double. We got almost double FPS, but less in the num if the number of channels it gets 15, it gets less improved. But we have still we still have an improvement. And the next in the next part here, when we use the same Printing ratio and the same device, the same number of channels, you see that this result is quite unstable comparing to this increment of the FPS. It's quite stable, but it's not, it's not quite stable. It's very unstable because we use the data type here. In neural network, we use the quantization here and pruning at the same time. We use we, we you see that this kind of um, unstable result. So I'm going to I'm going to introduce the Nespresso. In Nespresso, use pruning method, mainly pruning method, but we don't we don't support quantization yet. 
to provide to support our solution. So in the summary, uh, the summary is on device AI and its applications. And I introduced your driver monitoring system. And also I introduced intelligent transportation system. Um, I'm sorry for you guys. Um, I didn't bring the demos of this ITS solution because if you want, if you want to make this demo here, um, we need a whole city. So what can what, what can I do was just record this video clip. And actually we have a demo in rear, um, rear road in, in South Korea, but yeah. I couldn't bring the city and I couldn't bring the road to the June meeting. So I'm sorry for that. And the next meetup, I introduced you know, these two solutions. I told you that these two solutions were enabled by the Nespresso, which is our core technology, which produce small AI model awareing specific small devices. When you visit our website here, Nota AI, www.nota.ai, when you visit our solution, you see, you see that ITS and DMS. Some of you guys came here later, so you can refer to our website and contact us. You can visit the ITS here, or you can use the Netspresso. We'll be launched on on end, end of this month, like eight, this is eight, like this is 18 August. Um, the Nespresso, the full version of Nespresso will be launched on the 30, 30 August. So two weeks later, you will see the Nespresso working, fully working here. You try it. You can, you can, you can visit, our, you can give us a pre-registration. The official version, the full version of Nespresso will be released on August 30. Before that, the Nespresso was actually the Nespresso was in-house solution for our AI engineers in Nota AI, but we decided to publicly open our Nespresso solution to the public. So press this button and pre-register, and we are going to give you give you some tokens to access our solution. What a searcher, what a compressor, and launcher. And in, and in particular, this motor compressor, um, the in, in put, input is a large neural network and the output is a small neural network. So it's conceptually very simple. You upload small, upload your, your mobile net, ResNet, VGNet, whatever, with the PyTorch, TensorFlow, whatever, you upload your model without the data set, it's all data free. You upload your data set and the model compressor will give you compressed AI model within just five minutes without data set. So you can use it um, two weeks later. So yeah, this is our Nespresso, our core, te core technology, and it enabled us to develop this DMS and ITS solutions. And this is the end of our or meet up and please give me a question if you have. I think it's one hour. It's been an hour, not one, one and a half hours. So we then 30 minutes earlier than expected. So this is the end of our, our presentation. And if you have any question, please give me a use the chat. Yeah, what are the other projects we have in development? Actually, we have actually about one year ago, we had seven to 10 small scale projects at the same some simultaneously, like face recognition and pet, pet face recognition. And in convenience stores, we, we provided some AI models for stock management like cookies or ice creams or cans like in the convenience store 
you provide stock management system in the convenience and convenience stores, but we decided to focus, we, de we decided to cut out all the small project and we, de we decided to make two main big project like DMS and ITS. So we, we could do other, other some totally other, other types of tasks, but yeah, yeah, we, we decided to focus, focus on ITS and DMS. So there's no other project in development now, yeah. So please, uh, thank you for, yeah. Thank you, Udiha, please, Udiha, Mr. Udiha, if you, if you are here, first response. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, yeah. Any more question uh, you can uh, post uh, in the chat, or, yeah, uh, or you can post in our meetup group as well, then we'll go to our note AI as well. So uh, let me share my screen. Okay, uh, so thank you uh, all for joining uh, this meetup. So you can, uh, uh, we will having our second meetup next month. Uh, we'll be posting date and time in the meetup group. And you do keep engaged to our uh, meetup channel. So every month uh, we are bringing a lot of interesting areas uh, in AI, use cases, uh, with startup companies and uh, other product developments, things like that. Uh, so I think uh, this session will be uh, really helpful for you. Uh, with new technologies and uh, how to uh, work on these areas. Uh, there's a question uh, regarding the slide deck, uh, Eric. Oh, slide deck. Um, available, yeah. Oh, it's, actually, it's not available on our website. You can you can see the information, all the information on the website, but not the slide deck. So I'm going to let, I'm going to give you my email address. Please um, email me, then I'm going to send you the slide deck to you. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So any, any more questions? Of course, we have time, I uh, can ask. Uh, so uh, thank you, uh, Eric, uh, for uh, that wonderful session and uh, providing that uh, very valuable information. And we are planning to have our second se session next month as well. And we are hoping to see you all uh, in our next uh, meetup session. Uh, we'll be sharing uh, the details in coming weeks, exact uh, date and time on the second session, because uh, this is two part uh, series. So it's really encouraged to join the second session as well. Uh, it will be then the complete uh, uh, set of uh, products and services uh, onto the uh, not AI and the uh, set of uh, things that they are working on. Uh, it will be really helpful uh, for your product developments, your AI uh, kind of uh, developments that you are working on. So I think this session is really helpful for you guys. And thank you all uh, for joining the session. And uh, since we are recording the uh, session, we'll be sharing the meetup recording also in our meetup channel. Uh, so keep uh, on uh, to that as well. And if any of your colleagues not able to join the today's session, uh, you can share the video, video link uh, to their message. So thank you all for joining uh, and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.